Before we watch the video from Lindo Bacon's channel, let's look at the description. Ah, oh, jeez, the title. A plea for detente in the war on obesity? Or the answer to the request, tell me you're pretentious without saying you're pretentious. They do realize the war is metaphorical and not actual, right? So there's no way to ease tensions? Especially since the side of medicine believes that obesity causes early death and disease. So why would they say, ah, forget it, just let people be obese? But one way to encourage a detente, or lessening of tensions, would be to encourage communication. But look, comments are turned off. It seems someone can't take criticism or wants to silence both friend and foe. Hmm, the subscriber count is off, as if someone doesn't want to admit how badly their message is doing, and no one could see what the like-dislike ratio is. Strange. Can anyone remind me, in a war, if one side is pro-communication, while the other side wants to silence everyone, even their own people, which side is generally considered the bad guys? All right, strap in. Let's watch the video. It says, The Body Manifesto Video Series. Manifesto. Really? That's the word you want to go with? Like the Unabomber? We're fat, right? As a society, I mean. It's in the news, on the radio, in our Facebook feeds. More people than not are defined as medically obese. It's an epidemic, we're told, a sickness and a danger, like terrorism almost. And worse, they say it's spreading. This fear of fat, of being fat, of getting fat, of being around others who are fat, is fueling a war on fat, an endless war. Ugh, you mean endless rhetoric. Are you going to say anything specific and concrete, or just a bunch of vague, meaningless stuff? But is war what we really want? Did I accidentally tune into a political ad? I'm Dr. Linda Bacon, and for years, I waged my own war against my own fat. I worried I was too fat. I dieted. Then I dieted again, and I did this over and over and over. And you know what? Though I successfully lost weight many times, I really lost out in that war on fat. Because even for those rare individuals who actually maintain weight loss in the long run, fighting your body and its desires and all the bad feelings that engenders never goes away when you believe in the need for war. They talk about how impossible it is to maintain weight loss while showing their body where it seems pretty clear that they managed to maintain weight loss, and it seems they've done it for a long time. Do they think they're special or something? I would have forever been a victim to that war, if not for one important thing. I finally realized that instead of waging war, there's a more peaceful way to treat our bodies. There is a way to win. And that's by respecting our bodies, not waging war on them. With three graduate degrees in fields within weight science... Note, none of those degrees makes them an MD. There aren't many people in the world more academically educated than I am. Wow. Just wow. I was joking about you thinking you're special, but... Whew. Now, I devote my life to helping people all over the world understand and embrace what mainstream medical science has refused to. And that's to consider a new model for becoming and helping others become our healthiest and best selves. To talk less about weight and more about respect. I agree that doctors should be respectful, but doctors being rude does not make being obese healthy. Also, personally, I don't care if the doctor is slightly rude if they tell me what I need to hear. But we can't just give up. I can hear you thinking it now. You worry about chubby children, baby, or a heavy loved one or about yourself. Maybe you find fat unattractive. It wouldn't surprise me given how our culture shames round bodies and idolizes thin ones. Maybe you agree with others that larger people could just eat less or run more or make better choices to solve this obesity problem. Since this is a political speech they are giving, I'm gonna guess now that they don't come back to address these points, but instead try to brush them under the rug. I wanna ask you to put those notions on hold while well, you take a moment now to think about a real person who struggles with weight. I was right. They literally didn't cover any of the points they brought up. 
Not a single one. But instead tried to use a shiny ball to distract us. It could be a friend, a child, a spouse, a patient. Perhaps it's you. Consider the emotions that go with that. The belief that there's something wrong with my body. My body is a sign of failure. Think about the frustration this causes, the disappointment, the pain. Okay, I'm getting a little touchy-feely, I know. Probably the kind of thing more common here in Berkeley, California, than where others live. I guess they're trying to seem less robotic by taking the conversation here, but it's not working. Those of us who aren't fat live in fear of getting that way. And for those of us who are, well, it can be exhausting, demoralizing, and also expensive to keep fighting and fighting and gaining no ground. I call on all good people to think about it, to consider what we are saying with even our best intentioned and most caring messages in our obesity prevention or treatment attempts, that what we are really telling people, most people, is that we want to make sure no one looks like you. Wow. Trying to use emotions to manipulate the audience. Maybe they should run for political office. Joke's on them, though. The only emotions I know are wonder and disdain. And guess which one I'm feeling right now. Maybe you know someone like the teenager I met when I was speaking at her school. Do they really think that's going to motivate me? She asked me about the obesity prevention posters. There were tears on her cheeks. The only result I've seen is that I've been called fatso more this month than ever. These ridiculous stories are the bread and butter for a politician. And I don't believe them when presidential candidates say them either. Even if you're convinced that weight loss is a good thing, is it happening? And meanwhile, the pursuit of weight loss is taking a heavy toll. The harsh judgments and assumptions come in so many forms, from government anti-obesity campaigns to the biggest loser. Lol, nice. People hate the government. People hate the biggest loser. Gotta get those into your speech. And they rain down from so many trusted sources. Dietitians, politicians. Said the apparent politician wannabe. Children hear it from the teachers they look up to, and even the parents who love them. All are sending the same damning message. Fat is ugly. Fat is sickly. Fat is deadly. They tried to hide the important one that almost everyone agrees with after the two that almost everyone agrees is wrong. Obviously, being called ugly is bullying. But sickly is what we generally call underweight people. But just because someone doesn't want to believe being obese shortens your lifespan doesn't make it so. Fortunately, fat itself is nowhere near the health concern so many take it for. In fact, there are much better ways to solve all the problems we blame on fat, which I talk about more in another video. Ugh. I'll watch it, but only for you guys. If it were anyone else, there's no way I'd touch this thing. But for now, if we want to help others and ourselves, fat or thin, it's time to stop worrying with our bodies. It's time to shift our thinking and our priorities from worrying about body weight to cultivating body respect. We need to embrace a new attitude about healthcare and bodies, one that validates and respects everyone Yes, medical professionals should be professional and show respect. No, the doctor saying that losing weight would be good for your health is not being disrespectful. Anyway, that's the end of Lindo Bacon's vacuous video. Did you learn anything? I sure didn't. I hope you enjoyed that a lot more than I did. And so, another video comes to an end. Special thanks to Hannah McNally, Carl Williams, and Daniel Korov for their support. I hope everybody enjoyed the video and I'll talk at you guys again in a little while.